Hey folks, we're going to do a comparison. What you're seeing on the screen is the Sun SDR2DX, and let me correct the uh, window here. There we go. Uh, on the bottom right hand corner is the Sun SDR2DX. Top left corner is the what I'm using for the front end of the IC7300. It is SDR console running on a lower price dongle. I'm not going to say which one because I don't want to promote them. I'm using them because I have them, but I would never buy them again. <laughs> Anything from them ever again. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look. Uh, this is part of a series that I'm doing on the IC7300 and the comparisons between like a $2,500 to $3,000 radio and let's say a $150 front end which is uh, stuck onto the IC7300 via an RX7300 mod. Uh, it brings an IF out to an SDR dongle and then I light up SDR console. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bounce back and forth between SDR console on a particular signal in here. And it looks like they have cleared, so I'm going to have to find another signal. Bummer. And which I think we can grab that one right next door. It looks like a good one. Not particularly strong, but we're just going to listen to the front ends. Let's look at the difference between, let's say, a $2,500 rig and a, let's say, $150 uh, dongle. All right. And the whole point of this, I'm not going to tell you what I think is better. What I am pointing out with this is that I believe that you, if, if you're thinking about, let's say you own a 7300 or you own a rig that's capable of great transmit audio, right? Which the 7300 is. I've heard 590s that sound dynamite. Let's say an 890. And you want it to move into a true SDR realm without spending. Now, granted, an 890 is like three or four grand, so you might as well just buy an SDR radio. If you want to go there, you're pretty much busted. You're screwed. Unless you want to go ahead and do something like this. Um, of course, you can do whatever you want, and I'm not going to, I wouldn't tell people what to do. So this is just a seat of the pants comparison. Now, what I have is SDR console is set up. There is no noise reduction. It has an AGCT control. The sun, which is in the bottom right hand corner, no noise reduction, both of them at three kilohertz wide, and the appropriate sensitivity default, default sensitivity. Okay, uh, now keep in mind SDR console, can you can alter that. Uh, you can increase by, I believe it may be five or 10 dB steps. Um, so right out of the gate, everything is set as default as I can possibly get it to the def default settings, both at three kilohertz wide. Uh, the sun has a pseudo AGCT. I wouldn't call it an AGCT. It doesn't function like an AGCT. It functions more like an RF gain. Uh, of course, this is V2 running, uh, version two, but... Uh, that's relevant. Relevant. I just want to look at the raw front end of each of these. The raw front end of the Sun, the Expert SDR2DX, and SDR console running approximately $150 front end on the 7300. And like I said, in in my view, um. The whole purpose I'm doing this is for folks who are thinking about spending two, three, four thousand dollars on a on a full blown SDR. Well, you may want to consider something like this because I personally, personally, I, I like this setup and it works really well. Uh, so we're gonna just we're gonna grab a signal here and we're gonna go back and forth and you be the judge. Uh, I know what I hear. <laughs> And uh, there is a difference between the two. There is a difference in quality. 
between a $2,500 front end and a $150 front end. But that being said, the $150 front end is very, very good. Very good. So um, let's go. I uh, just find this interesting, and I figured this would be valuable for folks that are thinking about spending a whole lot of money and may not decide to after you see this. And I have something I will share regarding the 7300 at the end of this, so let's go. Let's find a frequency where somebody is yapping. This is the 7300 running SDR console with approximately $150 SDR dongle as the front end. Boy, everything just fell right out. There were a whole mess of signals in here a minute ago. No joint. So, Hands for H and D up for grab. Oh, that's a net. Okay, let's check this. Oh, is he in Europe? Maybe he's in Europe. Okay, Oscar Alpha Five. Oscar Alpha Five Alpha Bravo. Oscar Alpha Five Alpha Bravo. See what's up? Okay, so there. So my wife has the under cabinet lights on upstairs, which is throwing hash and trash on the band, which is actually a good thing. Uh, so we can check to see how quiet the front ends are as well. So a lot of hash and trash. That's what you're seeing on there. It's pretty brutal. Um, those humps in the pan adapter. Oh yeah, those under cabinet lights make an awful mess. So here we go, and then we're going to switch to the sun. So let me get the sun on the same frequency, 7173. Okay, we are going to switch now. Three, two, one. Switching back to console. Three, two, one. Going back to going back to the expert. Three, two, one. Thank you so much. Any more? Any more European? Any more European stations? At Tango India two, Julian Sierra. Okay, November four. November four again. Going back to console. Three, two, one. Hotel, Going back Kilo to the sun. Romeo, November 4, Hotel Kilo Hotel. Is that you, sir? Console. Okay, thank you for the 5x9. I have you 5x7. Back five to the expert. In Costa Rica, and my name is Javier. Juliet, Alpha, Victor, India, Echo, Romeo. Uh, for oh, he's in Costa Rica. Name, so let me flip the antenna. It's going to get loud. Louder. Okay, as you can see, Europe completely disappeared. We'll go back to Europe. Going back to back to console. Three, two, one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the AGCT. I'm going to quiet things down. And then we're going to check. Uh, let's find another signal. That was a good good test on signals that are, eh, they're a little marginal. So let me find another signal here that's a little stronger. And what we'll do is we'll work with the AGCT and we'll quiet things down. And then I'll flip back and forth on both rigs. See how quiet I can get them and still maintain a copy. So let's check this out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Florida. Could you repeat the call, please? Francisco, adelante Luis. Okay, Francisco. Para ti te doy 5-9. Señal 5-9. Okay, this is actually a good test because we can check uh, how tight the front ends are uh, with signals encroaching into the pass band. So this is actually a good test. So we'll sit right here. Yeah, it's not bad. That's pretty quiet. So that is 7162. Okay, so let's go to 2.8 wide. Okay, we're going to go over to the sun. And he starts talking again. Three, two, one. Let's go over to the sun. Going now. Okay, we're going to console now. Son, you can see that the amount of splatter on the sun, the encroachment into the pass band is easily equal to the $150 dongle. Going back to console. Okay, so let's scroll up to this station. Check-ins, 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 USDAW 40 meter net. We need some check-ins, check-ins, check-ins. Let's Come go to your a strong now. signal. As you can see, console does a great job. We got AGCT. Kilo 5, Delta Uniform Tango, QSL. Great job. Yeah, Roger, Roger, Don. You have stumbled up okay. on the USTAW. Let's get the sun over to 7197. It's United States Traffic and Awards Net. We work for... Let's uh, open up to... Those. We have a net here on 40 let's go meters. to 3 kilohertz. Set this at 3 kilohertz. I'm going to go, when he talks again, I'm going back to the sun. Yeah, Orders. Roger, Roger, if you stick around with us, uh, we'll get you some calls up here within the next uh, 30 minutes. We're going to start this net or so. We're trying to get the check-ins to get it started. QSL? Wait, I came in loud. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
Yeah, Roger, appreciate uh, that report there, uh, Donald. And uh, if you Console. want to hang around there, uh, we'll get to, uh, get some more calls in here and uh, some check-ins, and we'll get back with you. QSL, we use Net Logger, a Net Logger for our selfie, uh, logging software. QSL. Roger, Roger. Appreciate you checking in there, Don. I'm going to look for checking chance. Anyone for the USTAW Ford meter net, come in with a call now. Check-ins, check-ins, check-ins. USTAW Ford meter net. Console. Look for check-ins, check-ins. Come with your call now. That's all I can get there, Connor. Uh, W4OYB, back to you. Okay, so that's just uh, an interesting demonstration of, um, so the question is, right, is it worth taking a 7300 and moving it into a true SDR realm with a lower end dongle? And I can tell you the higher end dongles are, oh, they're cracking. Um you know, something like a hack RF, uh, stuff like that. They're, they're dynamite, man. Uh, so not much difference. If you notice, um, not sure, not sure. It's a tough call, but the, again, the point of this is I'm trying to give people options to get into this as cheaply as possible. And here's the story I wanted to present to everyone. I was on 40 meters today and this video will be linked to the website and there will be a website link in the description. And if you go to the 7300 page, there is information on how I'm getting TX audio into the rig. And I have since moved into full blown DAW. All of the TX audio is piped into the rig via USB audio codec, all virtually using the DAW. And there's a tutorial video linked in the website at the top of the page, which is on my YouTube channel. You'll probably see it. And I was chatting with some guys and kind of turned into a, um, a circus. <laughs> and uh, one of the guys told me, he said, you know, he said, I believe he's running in a non. And he said that, if I didn't look at the pan adapter and I heard you with my eyes closed and I wasn't looking at the pan adapter, I would swear you were running four kilohertz wide. And this is on the 7300. So if you're thinking about spending $3,000 on an STR, STR, like an Apache or a Sun or anything like that, At this stage of the game, me personally, myself personally, the only advantage to going to one of those rigs is, is if you want to run four kilohertz wide or wider, that's it. That's all you're getting. So to the discerning person, they will probably hear a difference in those two rigs. I know I do. I'm not going to say which one is better. You guys be the judge, but this is this is just an information type thing. I just want to throw this out there. Um, you know this channel and you know what I'm all about. Bang for the buck. What's the best bang for the buck? Where should I put my money? So uh, you guys be the judge. Of course, uh, the information is power. Now you have something you can see and you can compare it. My wife's stomping on the floor and I have dinner. Next video coming is the difference between the... SDR console being used as the front end and the ICOM 7300 raw front end. It's native front end, so I'll be doing a comparison between those. So you can see that that's going to be a more valid comparison regarding just the rig itself. Whether you should, you know, whether it's worth, is it worth going to a, a better front end? Well, I say better. That's that's just a personal preference. I shouldn't even say that word better. A different front end. But I can tell you it has a lot more control. I will stake my life on that, and that is a fact. Uh, this console has exponentially more control over the front end than the raw front end of the 7300. And I think anybody who sees what's coming in this next video will agree with that. 
Anyways, we'll see y'all later. To be continued.